All right, so here is section point or 0 0.4. We're skipping 0 0.3. Um, this section is algebra. I would argue that this is probably the most important part of this uh, this entire review. Um, so if you struggled in algebra, um, this is something that you definitely probably know that you're going to have to work on, and I'm glad to help out whenever the whenever it surfaces. Um, but please, you know, communicate with me and so I know whenever you're having trouble so I can help you out. Okay, so algebra, manipulate equations to isolate a variable using various techniques such as the distributed property. Uh, distributive property. So rearranging numbers and variables in equations, part one of three. Uh, when solving a mathematical equation to determine the value of one or several variables, rearrange the equation first to isolate a particular particular variable. Um, later on in the semester, we'll be working with something known as the ideal gas equation or the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Um, that's something that we will be using quite often. And what we're going to have to do with that is we're going to do things like we solve for T. And so we'll take this equation, we'll start out by, well, dividing by NR on both sides, which is displayed here. So then we have PV, PV over NR is equal to NRT divided by NR. Well, NR is going to cancel out over here, and you're left with what is displayed but partially obscured by, by my head. Um, PV over NR is equal to T. Wasn't too tricky. It was kind of fun, in fact, I would say. Okay. Rearranging numbers and variables and equations, part two of three. When solving for a variable that is the, in the not denominator, <clears throat> flip both sides of the equation so that that variable is in the numerator. To solve d over m is equal to 1 over v for v, so we're solving for v, simply flip both sides of the equation. What that's going to do is it's going to give us this equation. m over d is equal to v, well, because v over 1 that one simply is is kind of ignored, basically. So solving for a variable in an equation that involves addition or subtraction as well as multiplication requires a couple more steps. So rearranging numbers and variables in equations, part three of three. We need to solve for z. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated because that's what we want to solve for. So how would we go through this? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by b minus c. And that's going to take this, so divide by b minus c. That's going to cancel out there. And now we've got this. a over b, that's a b minus c, is equal to 1 over z plus 3. Okay, and remember, our aim is to get z alone. So we've gotten a little bit closer. Now what we can do is we can subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, easy peasy. Now we've got a over b minus c minus 3 over 1 over z. As you can see, we've gone from z being kind of buried in the, this whole mix to now, well, it's 1 over z. So now all that we have to do is what we did in part 2 of 3, where we take this thing that we want to solve for that's in the denominator and put it in the numerator by inverting everything, by flipping everything. And so that gives us, well, well, 1 over z, when you invert that, that's z over 1, or z alone. And then we've got 1 over a over b minus c minus 3. And that gives us that right there. Okay, so perfect, fantastic. So rearrange the equations, solve for the indicated variable. Um, example point 0.4, solve for, or example a, solve for v. Divide by this lambda, divide by lambda, lambda is crossed out, and we've got is equal to c over lambda. Okay, solve for b. Well, this one's pretty easy because all that we have to do is invert both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and draw b over a is equal to y over x. Okay, so we're solving for b. Now what we have to do is multiply both sides by a. And now we've got b, multiply both sides by a, b is equal to y over x 
times a. Okay, so we are good to go there. Which, yeah, done. That's what I did. The distributive property, a multiplier outside of parentheses can be distributed across each term within the parentheses to simplify a calculation. A common factor within a set of terms can be factored out and placed outside the parentheses. This is something that we're going to see in the next segment when we talk about uh, percentages. But this, um, this will be something that is, is covered quite a bit over the course of the semester. And I will, whenever we introduce this, I'm not going to say like, remember the distributive property. Um, instead, it's going to be something that the more that you see, for example, when we're talking about percentages, the more comfortable whenever you get to those sorts of problems that we want to do. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope this helps.